there is absolutely nothing today that threatens our liberties more than these so-called red flag laws. They are an egregious attack on the, the liberties of the American people and the constitutional form of government. Nothing is more potentially harmful than this. A red flag law, in a nutshell, is a law passed by a state thus far. It's, it's a state level. 17 states and the District of Columbia have passed red flag laws. And basically what they say is if someone, anyone, is suspected of maybe one day in the future might commit a crime, that anybody a police officer, a relative, maybe a, an, an ex-wife, uh, an employee or a boss or uh, a neighbor who has reason to have ought against this person, maybe a personal grudge. It, it could be almost anything. And that individual would make a complaint uh, the judge would sign the order, and without this person being charged with a crime, without this person even threatening to commit a crime, with no evidence whatsoever that a crime was going to be committed, without the person having an opportunity to defend himself against the accusation, the judge will send police officers to this individual's house and by force, they will remove all the firearms in that home. Then they will have a year, let's say, to try and convince the judge that they are not a threat. How are you going to prove a negative? And maybe, just maybe, they'll get their guns back more than often, more than, uh, more than not, the guns will not be returned at the end of the year. In fact, more often than not, they won't be returned at all. Here's the problem. Here's what the judge is thinking. The judge is thinking, okay, even though there's no evidence, there's no proof, we have nothing except this accusation by this friend, you know, ex-wife who's angry or ex-husband who's angry or a neighbor who's angry or maybe an anti-gun cop or whatever the motivation could be, it could be anything. And the judge may know that there is no legal cause, there's no probable cause for this, for this order, but under the red flag law, the judge is thinking, if I don't issue this order and then perchance this individual later on, six months later, a year later, does commit a crime, and then they're going to find out that I, you know, that I didn't. And they're, they're, so the bottom line is, it's almost a rubber stamp. The judge is afraid not to do it, uh, and and so the judge will give the order. It's it's almost a rubber stamp, and the people lose their Fourth Amendment liberty. They lose their Fifth Amendment liberty. They lose their right to face their accuser. They lose. They, they lose due process. When, when President Trump got up and foolishly said that we should take the guns first and go through due process later, he proved, A, his ignorance of the Constitution, and then he showed a complete disregard for constitutional government. Because when you say go through due process second, what you're saying is, there is no due process. So if you don't have due process first, then you don't have due process at all. And so red flag laws eliminate the constitutional requirement for due process in this regard. And, and the serious thing of this is the, the right of self-defense is a, an alienable God-given right. It is the duty of man to be able to defend him or herself. For 
the state to take away that fundamental right of self-defense based upon nothing more than an accusation without evidence, without proof, without due process, without constitutional um, applications, renders this individual helpless and therefore vulnerable to any potential act of violence committed against him and his loved ones. So who is going to take responsibility for this individual and perhaps his family who once it's known, it's always published in the, in the news media, you know who the individual is, you know where he lives, you know now that he's been stripped of his, of his means of self-defense and he's all intents and purposes a helpless individual. So the real bad guys who are looking for a soft target now know where they can go to rob or steal or whatever it is they have in mind to do. So they target this individual because he was denied his, his Second Amendment protections. And he's harmed his wife, his children, whatever takes place. Uh, are, are they beaten? Are they killed? Uh, are, are they raped? What happens to this family? And who will take responsibility for that family? Will, will the police officers take any responsibility, the ones who came and took the guns by force? Will the judge take any responsibility for signing the order? Will the accuser take any responsibility for making the accusation? Nobody will take responsibility, absolutely none. And, and so this, this is one of the most egregiously unconstitutional acts that could possibly happen in our country. And for 17 states to already pass this law, in the state of Florida, for example, since that law passed, uh, what, less than two years ago, 2,500 people have had their firearms removed from their homes under red flag laws, including very elderly people and including children. It, it's insane. and and. If, if this continues to grow, and if this becomes a national law, the potential for harm across the board grows exponentially. Maybe just close on this point, reminding everybody that for decades and decades and decades, previous to our Declaration of Independence, the colonies petitioned government, redressed government. There, there were decades and decades of talk and debate and redress, and, and they, they arduously appealed to the Crown on behalf of liberty and, and the rights of, of the colonists. So that had gone on for many, many decades without, without violence. But when the Crown sent 800 British troops to march on Lexington and Concord to seize the guns of the colonists, that was when the shot was fired at Lexington Green that was heard around the world and our war for independence began. That was April 19, 1775 at about 4 a.m. Jonas Clark, the pastor of, of, of the church in Lexington and his men, his congregation, were mostly the Minutemen that stood on the green, which was just outside the church house on that fateful morning. The point is that there were all kinds of inequities, there were all kinds of injustices, all kinds of conflicts between the crown and the colonies that did not result in violence. But when the crown went to seize the guns, the natural right of man to protect himself, 
the colonists fought back. So I'm, I'm saying that these people, these politicians, and these judges and these policemen that are making these laws, enforcing these laws, passing these laws, they don't realize, some of them do, but many of them don't realize what they're doing, that this is an attack against the fundamental right of all men codified in our Constitution of self-defense. It's unacceptable.